calls us to believe and to live and believe. The gospel is a bridge from Jesus' teaching ministry to this week's passion, to his passion. And it invites us, this gospel invites us to tie the teachings of Christ to his life, suffering, death, and resurrection. And it also invites us to tie his teachings to our own life, suffering, death, and resurrection. In this gospel story, we can be any of the characters that were presented, such as Martha, whose faith grew step by step as she got to know Jesus just a little more, or Lazarus, who prefigured Jesus, his, his um, time in the tomb, and the stone at the tomb, and walking to the tomb. There were many similarities, and then the resurrection of Lazarus by Jesus. Also, the disciples later would understand and teach, and the Jews who began to believe. Today, in this scripture, we heard the profound words of Christ. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Those are good words to stew on and stew on and stew on. First, we must believe as we hear these words. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Little House on the Prairie. My wife and I, we kind of share with our kids different um, series from the Little House, different um, chapters or whatever you want to call them. And one of the stories that we had just recently seen like a few weeks ago um, was the haunted house. And in this, this haunted house was a big old English house sitting up on a hill, and an old spinster man lived in it. The house had not been taken care of for about 30 years, and the, the yard had grown all up. It was just really a mess. The shutters were kind of falling off. It, it did look like a haunted house. So little Laura Ingalls, that's the middle girl, the one that's so rambunctious and just as sweet as a button, she was dared by her friend Nellie Olson and Willie and another friend to go to the house, up to the house as they was walking past it and bring something back to them. And she took the dare and she went and got a piece of wood from the house. But in the meantime, her dog went into the house through a little cavity. She knocked on the door, nobody answered, so she went in looking for her dog. The dog had gone upstairs and in a room, a special room, the only room in the house that was kept in order, there was a big beautiful picture of a beautiful woman that was on that, that was in the, in the picture. At that time, the man, the, the spinster man, showed up. He was a very, first of all, he was an ungodly man. He, he did not know God, he did not know Jesus. He was very rude. No one liked him. He never spoke a word to anyone. Um, even if he went into the store, he would get what he wanted, lay the money and the change on the counter and walk out without saying a word. And he was very mean to this young girl, also to Laura when she was in there. But if you know Laura and her character, she let him have it. She told him, now I know why people don't like you. I know why. Um, the kids don't like you and make fun of you and call you names and, and is, makes fun of you all the time and is afraid of you and she would just really let him have it one side and down the other. After that she left and as she went home she realized just how lonely this man was and she really felt bad about it so she decided to go back and apologize to him. So she went back to apologize to him, but he would not accept the apology. She, he wouldn't even hardly let her into the house, but she made her way in anyway, and she did apologize to him. And then after that, she went and got a broom and started sweeping the floor and says, I'm gonna clean the floor. And every day she came back for a week and cleaned the floor. The one day, however, when she came back, her friends came with her 
and they was in there, and he came in and seen everyone there. Once again, he resorted back to his mean, his mean self and ran them all out, including Laura, and told her he never wanted to see her again, that he never wanted her in that house again. She went home and she felt very bad for him. And she got her Bible out and began to pray and read through it. And she came across the reading that we had today, that, that uh, 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 I am the resurrection and life, that segment there. And she underlined it in her little Bible. And then she asked her dad if she could go back over. So she went over to the, the spinster's house and he would not answer the door and she knew he was there. So as she walked, she placed it under a little stump and, and walked on knowing that he would come out and get it, which he did. He did get it and he read through it. After he read through it the next day, he came over to their house, to the, um, to the uh, Ingalls house and, and told them that he was so sorry for all the different things and that she was such a good little girl and that he forgave her and he was sorry for being so unkind. And then he went back to his home and at his home, he started pulling weeds and he pulled the weeds and it revealed a tombstone that his wife was buried there. You see what happened was his wife died 30 years ago. She was an actor and she, she was an actor that was a traveling person, but she settled with him after they got married. And then one day she left. She, he thought she just left her and went into town to be an actor. And that is what he pretended to all those times as he denied her death. You see, he denied her death for a reason. He did not, what else would there be for someone who did not believe in God? There would be nothing. There would be no hope. There would be no reassurance. There would be nothing. Now, after reading that passage and learning who God was, he began to believe. So we hear these profound words once again that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. He had hope. So now what about us? What would it be like for us if we did not believe? But we all believe and that's why we're here. But then there's a second part to this also. And Jesus says, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So what does that mean for us? That actually means very much for us. It means that we are to live and to believe. That is our next step and step by step we do this. We have our faith and we have our good works. Step by step we do these good works and we do more and more. We accept God's life-giving power and grace that he sheds upon us and he resurrects us daily in what we do. A different kind of resurrection than the Easter resurrection, but yet he resurrects us at this time as well. And he takes us beyond death and suffering also as we travel with him, as we live with him step by step. As we live and believe, we embrace all the fears of suffering and death. We also embrace that step-by-step -step dying of self day after day with our good works. And these good works restores life in us. And that life that is restored in us is with a capital L, which represents Christ, because Jesus tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. So with Christ in us, it makes a little bit more sense, the words that he says, once again, whoever lives in me will never die. Jesus invites us to believe in him and to live and believe in him, to walk with him and to die with him and to share eternal life with him. Here, now, and forever in heaven.